Hello, my name is Dr. Susan Plank and welcome this evening to Hormone Harmony and Female Hormone Reset. This is a very important topic, uh, no matter how many female clients I've had through the years, uh, rarely, rarely, I could probably count on one hand out of the thousands of clients I've had that a woman has actually had her hormones uh, checked, meaning tested and evaluated accurately. So I'm excited to bring this presentation to you this evening. So uh, the, the goal of this presentation is to really show you what's possible for you. Hormone imbalances can cause a lot of different symptoms, fatigue, tiredness, bloating, cramping, and it varies obviously throughout a woman's life whether younger or older. And so I want to show you that one of those symptoms is a really stubborn weight gain, hard to get off. So whether you're a woman in your 60s, here's on the, a client that's lost 60 pounds and still going, or a woman in your 30s and still having your cycle but having issues. Now, another example of a younger client who lost 25 pounds in 10 weeks. So the thing is with hormones is that age doesn't really matter. The symptoms do. What are the symptoms doing to you? What are the symptoms doing to you? So age doesn't matter, but what our goal that does matter is hormone balance. Okay, age doesn't matter, hormone balance does. So uh, here's an overview of what we'll be discussing this evening and let's go ahead and dive right in. We wanna understand female hormones. Here is a, a hormone cascade. This one slide shows hormones, how they are metabolized in the body, and it doesn't matter whether male or female, this is how hormones are metabolized in the body. If you look at the very top up here, you're going to see cholesterol. You're going to see cholesterol up here. All our sex and adrenal stress hormones are developed from cholesterol. So we want to make sure that uh, if a woman is taking cholesterol lowering medication, that is another factor that can affect uh, hormone balance throughout the body. So we're going to dive into this cascade and explain it in more depth as we move forward here. And I want to start with the adrenal stress hormones and specifically cortisol, otherwise known as the belly fat hormone. So again, same hormone cascade. We have the darker outlining where we're going to see the metabolization to get to the adrenal stress hormones. Adrenals are little glands that sit above our kidneys. They're, they're little triangular. And you might know about cortisol, again, known as a belly fat hormone, it's produced when someone is under stress. Here's the thing, it's not always bad though. Stress actually is good for us, but it needs to be short-term stress. We're seeing more and more women, especially younger women, uh, being put on anti-anxiety medications, antidepressants, older women, sleep medication. These are all aspects of uh, these adrenal stress hormones being out of balance, uh, and we're going to see how that affects other hormones of sex hormones in a minute. But what I want you to realize as we go through this presentation, that top to bottom and side to side, hormones need to be in balance. There's always something on the other part of this diagram balancing it out. So cortisol can go high when somebody's under stress, but then we expect DHEA to be able to pull it back down into balance. And that's the way those should, two should work. So you might get stressed about something. It could be an infection you're fighting physically. It could be you're stressed out at school or work. Your cortisol goes up, but we want it to be a short-term stressor and the DHEA is going to respond to pull cortisol back into normal. Unfortunately, the way this uh, cascade is set up is our pathways to cortisol 
uh, can actually rob or steal these higher up hormones. So the cholesterol turns into pregnenolone, which is known as the mother of hormones, which turns into progesterone and so on and so on. But we can see from this diagram that now we have two pathways to get to cortisol, which can really feed into cortisol and keep that stress hormone higher which means belly fat can accumulate very quickly and it can be the higher this hormone stays, very, very difficult to get off and remove. And at the same time, as the DHEA is trying to work, uh, the hormones that make the DHEA, the precursors for the DHEA are getting shunted over to cortisol, which now makes DHEA's response to try to balance cortisol that much weaker. So now we sort of have a runaway train uh, and we have cortisol pushing the beast, which leads to more symptoms, more anxiety, uh, more fatigue, and more weight gain. So uh, again, you see the kidneys, these little triangular organs, these would be adrenal stress hormones. We tend to see with stress, the cortisol go higher, and unfortunately, it's not short-term. It goes up and stays up. Uh, DHEA then gets depleted, and then, boy, uh, the woman, unfortunately, can just accumulate fat, uh, belly fat, upper thighs, uh, buttocks, uh, breast tissue. The body just really accumulates this sort of dangerous visceral belly fat and it's very hard to get rid of, and it can happen very quickly. So I want to talk about that. Now we're going to move into the female sex hormones, and the reason I wanted to do the adrenal stress hormones first is because they are actually precursors. That DHEA is a precursor to testosterone and estradiol, estrogen. And so here again, for the sex hormones, we have the same thing. If you cut this diagram into quarters, you want the top and the bottom to be balanced. So in hormone replacement therapy, we should never have a woman being put on progesterone or estrogen without the other one. We should always have through menopause and later in life an estrogen progesterone balance. DHEA converts to testosterone, which then converts to estrogen. So we want to make sure that, again, we have sex hormone balances, but we have to start with the adrenal stress hormones. And this is a lot of time what isn't done in hormone replacement therapy is those uh, stress hormones, DHEA in its level, isn't taken into account. And therefore, uh, the, the bottom part where the sex hormones are, the bottom metabolites are, are really just given more and more and more, uh, and it overwhelms. It's not easy for the body to get rid of big surges of these hormones. It should be sort of like a slow drip, okay? So sex hormones before menopause, so earlier in life when women are still having their menstrual cycle, uh, we can see these changes taking place uh, before menopause. These hormones are produced in the ovaries, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone. And they can go up, they can go down. That's why uh, around menstrual cycle, women can have such variations in their symptoms. And unfortunately, instead of these uh, hormones actually being tested, this is where now we see birth control pills being used to just sort of stop the symptoms. It's a band-aid to stop the symptoms. Birth control pills do not fix the problem. It just stops the symptoms. So it's going to overwhelm some hormone here. It's going to, it's going to affect the progesterone or it's going to affect the estrogen. It, it, the birth control pills are, are in a way that yes, they're there to prevent pregnancy, but they're not a treatment. They don't fix, they don't balance hormone irregularity. And unfortunately, most of the time now, birth control pills are recommended for younger women. And yet the woman never finds out, or the family, if because now I'm seeing it in, in teenagers, the family never has a good understanding of 
what is the problem? Why is there a problem? It's just, oh, the easiest thing, take a birth control pill. Unfortunately, later in life, when that woman wants to get pregnant or start a family, uh, it's not so easy now because that underlying problem is still there. And then sometimes it's worse. It's just been masked and hidden by the birth control pill. And so when we look at female sex hormones, when a woman is going through menopause and after menopause, these same hormones, like I said, are produced primarily in the ovaries, but now at menopause, they're all decreasing. So earlier in life, we can have imbalances of them going up, going down, but now at menopause, they're all decreasing, okay? So what happens is the body tries to create secondary sex hormones, but the body is not efficient. It doesn't have a way from the ovaries to produce progesterone after menopause. To produce estrogen, we can get some from the adrenals, which is how we just went over that DHEA converts to testosterone, converts to estrogen. But now fat, any accumulated fat in that woman's body can also produce estrogen, but it's not a healthy type of estrogen. And uh, me professionally, personally, I believe this is a very important component when we start to look at where we're at with uh, breast cancers and reproductive endometrial um, cancers for women, we need to start to look uh, more closely at these issues. And also the testosterone, like we talked about, also produce, can be produced from the adrenals from the conversion of that DHEA. This secondary hormone production in no way can replicate the strength of the hormones being produced from the ovaries. But when women say, hey, if my body wanted to produce hormones, it would do it. Well, it's trying. It's trying. Uh, and you have to make sure that it's healthy hormones, not ones from fat that are going to be unhealthy. So no matter what age a woman is around hormones and her sex hormones uh, and stress hormone balance, uh, we can see fatigue, bloating and cramping, hot flashes, night sweats, temperature irregulation, and the weight can come on very quickly, uh, usually around a woman's uh, cycle when she's earlier, she can gain two or three pounds and then lose it a few days later. But unfortunately, when a woman is postmenopausal or perimenopausal, that doesn't happen as easily. The weight comes on and doesn't go off. Uh, so we want to look at the causes of hormone imbalance. And so until we get uh, and accept that events that happen maybe earlier in life or events in a body are accumulating, we can't really start to get the balanced hormones. And a big one on this page that I want to talk about, there's a couple, but toxins. I want you to think of everything in our environment. Think of something you pick up at the grocery store and you look at the ingredient list and you can't even recognize it just looks like a gibberishness of chemicals and and colorings and additives those are toxins to the body it's not natural and so anything we drink in anything we breathe in anything we eat anything we put on our skin makeups perfumes they will be if absorbed into our body our liver has to metabolize them. Our liver's responsibility is as a big filtration system to then get rid of it. So it's either gonna go out through the kidneys, which can put a burden on the kidneys, or out, go out through the digestive system through a bowel movement, which can put a burden on the digestive system. And so what I want you to realize is think of a satellite dish on somebody's house. And if a hormone, the satellite dish would be the hormone receptor. The hormone comes along and the hormone is a way to share information. So an organ 
releases the hormone or a gland. The hormone makes it to the receptor and it has to dock in that dish. It has to fit perfectly in that receptor. If it doesn't fit perfectly, if there's not enough hormone production, if the hormone is malformed, if the receptor is malformed, if the receptor has junk sitting on it, like these toxins, chemicals, colorings, that hormone can't give the right communication. The hormone can't share the signal to tell that gland or organ what to do. And so now we can get no and or wrong information shared and it really can create havoc when we're talking about stress and hormone production. These things, how you behave emotionally, right? How you think about things, how you think about yourself, how you think about the world, how your body develops these hormones control sexual development, control your body makeup. And so if we have toxins, too many toxins in the diet, the body doesn't know what to do with them if it can't get rid of them. And they can start to actually block or disrupt the communication between the hormone and that receptor, which can wreak havoc on a woman's body, both emotionally and physically. I really hope you guys understand that. Okay. Another very important thing here, inflammation is because a lot of women are dealing with inflammation, especially around hormones. I think of a condition we're going to talk about PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome has a lot to do with inflammation. And when we're looking at uh, these types of things, we're looking not only uh, at the body as a whole, but we're looking at individual organ systems and we're looking at individual cells. So when we look at earlier in life, you might have felt like you were getting away with poor eating or not drinking water, relying on caffeine or your cup of joe to get you through the day energy wise. As you go through life, those choices are going to be an accumulation of events that can affect hormones and affect the balance of your hormones. Okay. Other things are like childhood trauma that are going to drastically affect those adrenal stress hormones, loss of a loved one. These are not stressors that are just sort of flipped like a switch. Oh, a couple hours or a day later, you're going to forget about it. These very heavy emotional and physical traumas can stay with a woman throughout life, affecting her adrenal stress hormones, which then are going to cause imbalances in her sex hormones and much more severe symptoms as she ages. Another thing is blood sugar. So if you're really a sugar pastry, you know, carb, carboholic, you really love those, those sugars and, and carbohydrates. You're a big snacker. We need to look at, because that will kick in another hormone insulin and insulin can also disrupt these hormones. So we have to have a whole body, uh, look and almost a whole life look uh, to see what's going on but we can really perfect that and zero in when we get these hormones balanced. So the importance of hormone testing is to actually track the effectiveness of a treatment. Uh, this is a client that had come to me. She had, had had some menopausal symptoms. She had been put on a progesterone cream. Uh, no testing had been done. She was just given this prescription progesterone cream. You can see when she came in at the beginning of 2022, January, her progesterone was 399. Okay. Ideally, we want all these hormones to be right down the middle, sort of, of the green. We want them in the green area. If you look towards the bottom, you can see the cortisol. We're checking somebody's cortisol when we do this on saliva. This is saliva testing. 
and we're going to check it four times a day to get how that person's stress is throughout the day. And we can see that very first cortisol reading is low. She was really struggling to get out of bed. She was really, really having a hard time and she had a lot of responsibilities. She was caring for a parent. She was caring for a spouse. She was a small business owner, really struggled with a lot of problems. And so we implemented uh, a plan, eating plan, right? Uh, tried out, she wanted to lose some weight too. So we started working together uh, and, and it took probably the initial three months before she really started feeling emotionally, hey, I'm on top of it. But she said it was so much better. Her sleep improved, her energy improved. Uh, and she had actually even tried antidepressants uh, before thinking that was sort of the issue that she was overburdened, overwhelmed, that antidepressants would help. But again, they, they didn't. And she just kept gaining weight from antidepressants. So there we see at our follow up, uh, she had lost uh, over 45 pounds. You see the hormones much, a much better distribution and a much healthier range. She felt so much better. She was, she was a vibrant, a vibrant woman. Here's another uh, client you can see, uh, again, the hormones we see particularly here, look at the evening cortisol. Uh, so this is a client that, and again, we had worked together. She wanted to lose weight when she initially came in of March of last year. And she was really stressed out at the end of her day. Again, women with a lot of responsibilities, work is just one of them. You get home from work and you still got all the things to do with the spouse, the, the kids, grandkids maybe. It's, your, it's like you're starting your second job when you get home. So by the time she was going to sleep at night, her stress hormone cortisol was way too high. Which, what does that mean? That means anything she was eating in the hours leading up to bed, her body was holding on to. So she was actually put in a mode of fat storing where she was like sort of the simplified gaining weight overnight while she's sleeping. Because whatever she'd eat from dinner on snacking through the night, all was getting stored because that cortisol was so high. So this is an example of where she was when we first started working together. She had lost uh, 40 pounds. She felt great. Off she went. Then I get a call from her uh, earlier this year and says, you know what? I started taking this uh, prescription hormone replacement therapy. I thought it would help my libido. I thought, you know, I started gaining some weight around the holidays. And they told me uh, this is exactly what I needed. So they gave her, uh, again, a progesterone only, a progesterone only hormone replacement therapy. And for this woman, unfortunately, it was going in as progesterone and it was all converting to cortisol. So where we knew she had a little bit of an issue earlier, uh, when we started to work together with our night, her evening, you can see what it did after she introduced the prescription pregnenol, or, uh, progesterone. Uh, it went to 110. So I really want you to be aware of how testing shows us where you're starting from. That we have, uh, just like these examples, if somebody wants to try something and wants to try hormone replacement therapy, hey, I'm all for it but let's be smart about it and let's know what's happening to your hormones because everybody's hormones are going to react differently. And in each of these cases, we needed to look at the whole person to get them healthier, get their cells healthier, clean up those receptors and help support hormone balance. So uh, uh, hormonal conditions, adrenal fatigue. These are the people just like the first, the first, the uh, first, uh, client there waking up and just feeling wiped out, right? Just no matter how much sleep they get, it just doesn't feel will be enough. 
uh, just the sort of walking wounded. Uh, they're mentally tired, they're physically tired, their brain is tired. Uh, you're getting sort of surges now of cortisol that's, that it is the person will go from exhausted to sort of wired and, and very, very anxious, um, can lead to trouble sleeping, really are reliant on salty foods and caffeine, and it can get so severe that when they stand up, we'll actually see them get dizzy. So adrenal fatigue relates back to those adrenal stress hormones. When we start to see the DHEA get depleted, the cortisol has been pumping out so high for so long, it starts to get depleted and the person is just starting to crash energy-wise, mentally, physically, everything is just, it's, it's like every interaction is just too much for them. Uh, PCOS we talked about, this is a condition uh, where the woman's body is going to be very inflamed. They're going to have a lot of testosterone for a woman, more testosterone. Women should have some, but they'll have more testosterone and which also includes a lot more insulin. Their cells will develop insulin resistance. So they'll be very fatigued. Um, They'll start to have other symptoms like acne and mood changes, trouble with conceiving, infertility, weight will come on and they just can't lose it. Because of the excess of testosterone in a woman, we'll see male pattern baldness. We can actually see thinning of the hair, but a woman can start to grow facial hair and that can be actually coarse, maybe a mustache or other hair start to pop up and a very low sex drive. We can't lose through this process, ladies, uh, that a low sex drive uh, is very, very difficult on the person going through it. But also if you're in a relationship, it puts that much more pressure on the relationship. Uh, and for women with PCOS, even having uh, sexual intercourse can be very, very, painful. Uh, menopause, we're going to have uh, mood swings. So again, that's where now the ovaries just sort of shut off and it seems like almost overnight. So a very rapid decrease in progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. So the mood swings start, the hot flashes, night sweats, again, decreased libido, vaginal dryness. Again, intercourse can be very painful, so it's not pleasant. Uh, in irregular periods as we start into menopause that can really uh, be a problem for women of midlife. So when I look at hormonal issues and wanting to balance hormones, we want to test, we want to find out where you're at. We have to know where these levels are really, honestly, especially when somebody's been on birth control pills or later in life, if they've tried a hormone replacement therapy, we have no idea what's, what's happening in your, how your body's metabolizing those hormones. Just because you're taking a pill doesn't mean that your body is doing wonderfully with it in all pathways. We need to understand it. We need to know. So we want to clean up the diet. We want to get inflammation under control, which is a big part from diet. We want to detoxify those toxins, right? So as we test, we want to look, we want to get rid of the toxins. We need to balance the hormones. We want to detoxify those hormone receptors. We want to make sure we get rid of metabolites quickly that they're not hanging around, hormone metabolites. And then we want to replenish woman. We want to build up with healthy levels. Okay. So, uh, Fem Balance 28, it's a, it's a personalized hormone solution that I offer women. Uh, we really, it's for women of any age. We're going to get the hormones tested. I like to do it in saliva. We get all those that we just saw there. We get multiple readings of cortisol throughout the day to find out where your stress levels are throughout the day. Is it affecting your sleep? We found out the DHEA 
we find out the uh, estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. It's a little kit. We ship it to you, and it's so simple, it's done on saliva. So you would be doing saliva samples throughout the day, and then you ship that in a pre prepaid mailer back to the lab. We get the results, and then we have a virtual report of findings to go over your results. Uh, this program will be starting uh, coming up in just a couple of weeks. So benefits. These symptoms that we talk about, right? The fatigue, the bloating, the cramping, the weight gain. We start to see when we balance hormones, that woman's energy comes back. The belly starts to get flatter, right? As estrogen decreases, the belly fat sort of accumulates around the belly button. The libido improves, some weight loss, and you get your confidence back. You get your mojo back. You're ready to tackle the day or whatever's coming at you. So uh, if you are interested in any more information, please don't hesitate to reach out. My name's Dr. Susan Plank. You can contact me at drplank at norwinwellness.com. That's drplank at norwinwellness.com. We will be starting a group Fem Balance 28 program uh, May 15th, but this can be undertaken at any time. But please, if this is something you're interested in doing, getting your hormones checked, this is a great program because we're going to check your hormones. We're going to find out what's going on. We're going to implement a plan to get those hormones balanced, personalized for you. That's my responsibility. And then we're going to work with you over 28 days to get your eating uh, improved. So the eating component is working along the same time as we're balancing your hormones. So thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Uh, I uh, Honestly, I would love to answer any questions that you have at this time, but thanks so much for, for sharing your evening, and I appreciate it. Again, any questions at all, my name is Dr. Susan Plank of the Norwin Wellness Center, and you can reach me at drplank at norwinwellness.com. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a good night now.